Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I have a treat for you. I have two, count them two, videos on stamped watercolor from Art Impressions. I was going to try to cover both the cabins and the shops in one video, but this is going to be the shops video. The other one will be the cabins because it got too long. So there you go. I'm using my set of Tombow markers. Yes, this one has my name on it. Ellen Hudson put it together so that I could have a set of colors that I always use with my AI watercolor stamps. And one of the things I noticed that AI is doing now is letting you pull apart all of the bits and pieces of your stamp, which is perfectly fine. They're really easy to pop out. And they also come with a little sheet. So if you keep them in something where you like getting that little acetate sheet. They now come with that instead of just being kind of loose in the package. And I put mine into CD cases or DVD cases, so I don't really need that, but that's quite all right. I'm putting it in my Misty without the black pad in it and then putting some color on it. I'm using a couple different colors to stamp the building itself. And you can use browns and blues and greens and all different kinds of interesting colors, whatever color you want to use for your building. And I have both of these stamped on Arches watercolor paper. And this is one of the cases I have. I divide my sets so that I have all of my small flowers here. And I've picked out a group of small ones that I put on little blocks. You can get a little set of blocks from Art Impressions as well. Ellen carries them if you're looking to get everything all at once. And I'm just going to start painting and I'm painting with water and all of the color from the marker starts turning into watercolor. And I like the Tombow's best for this, which there's a couple different brands you can use, but they act differently. So just want you to know that if you use other markers, you can use your zigs, just use less water with them. With Distress, you might need to use a little more water. Really depends on your markers as well and how saturated with color they are. Are they drier? Are they wetter? Etc. And I'm just using a goodly amount of water to melt this out. But if you use too much water, all of your lines will completely disappear. So think about that when you're trying to get the look that you're going for. If you want it to be really soft, then use lots of water. And then for each one of the flowers that I'm stamping, I'm stamping on them, basically well, not stamping on them, I'm coloring on them with markers, just like I did when I, I stamped the building itself. And then you can also put color onto a block. And I've got a little block here. Where I'm just adding some color that I can paint in the windows. I can put some green in there and add in greens in the flower boxes, etc. Now these shops do not come with flowers, you're going to need some other flowers. And in the supply list, I'll link my two favorite sets of general flowers. There's a lot of different sets from Art Impressions where they give you, you know, a birdhouse or a bird bath or something, and they come with one or two flowers. That's where all of my collections come from. I have three of those big containers and I break them into the small, the medium and the large sized so that I can kind of on like on this one, pick out the ones that are going to fit. They're going to be appropriately sized for that image. And for this one, I needed all the small ones. And then you can paint the, the greens in there. You can draw them in with the marker itself. I'll show you some different ideas too on the other stamp from this set, because it has two of these shops in it and uh, that sort of thing. So this one, I'm going to give more of a a brick red kind of color for the roof and for some of the accoutrements. And I did that by scribbling some red and some brown onto my block at the same time so I can mix a new color. You don't have to stick with just the colors that are in your marker set. So getting another stamp ready here and I'm going to add some little flower baskets that are going to hang off the building. There's little, there's little marks on there and I don't know if they're supposed to be hooks but I thought they would be really cute since this is a little sweet shop that I would just add on a little basket onto each one. So I stamp flowers and then put a little, little mark there for the container for the, the flower basket. And then I can just use 
water and a brush and a little bit of marker on the block in order to add the greens to it. So you can do that with any kind of building that you're adding stuff to. I love adding little extra bits onto mine because every single one of these art impressions cards that you make is going to be unique. I, I find it literally impossible to do the same thing twice. They just never come out exactly the same and that's what I love about them. So it's awesome. This one has a cute little awning. So I put stripes on the awning and then I'm using the same red brown mixture to paint the door and that's going to give it a little bit more calmness in there. On an image like this, you want to have some areas where there's something solid because if everything in your picture has texture in it, it's going to be really visually disconcerting. So I'm also adding some darker color. I put some darker color on my block so I can have some shadow around the door underneath of where the awning is and then stamping some grass around it so that I can water that out and have some little greens around there and once it was wet and I stamped into it it got more intense in color so that's one of the little little tricks for art impressions watercolor that makes them kind of pop now I'm going to go in with a marker and I'm just going to use the bullet nib to add in a few areas that got a little washed out where I wanted a little more contrast shadows underneath the boxes themselves you know, under roof lines, that sort of thing. You can firm those up with a, just a little bit of marker. Don't get too heavy with it. And if you're, if black scares you, use some brown. You don't have to go crazy with it. But there we go. Cute little sweet shop. The word sweets does come in the stamp set. So you can add that on there or you could write in whatever kind of shop you want to make it. Now this is the other stamp that's in this set. And this one I'm going to make a cafe. And I thought I'd show you a little bit of both the side and the top angle so you can see how much water I use when I'm painting one of these. Because I do use a goodly amount when I'm trying to make it really soft and mushy. So here I'm just filling that whole top section. But if I go past that line, then the line's going to disappear. So if you connect the line to the next section, that's when all that's going to go away. So you have to be prepared for that. And if you go over the line, just be ready to go back in later after it's dry and draw in another line. Here you might add a gray line instead of a black line so that you don't end up with something too harsh as well. So for this one, the door is recessed since it has an awning over it. So the door is going to get dark and I'm going to even make it darker by the time this whole thing is finished. So I've got my building pretty well set and there's a, a sign up there and that's where I'll put my text later on when I stamp it. And then I'll add in my little flowers, same set of flowers that I used before, just had them all out and I'm going to use the same bunch of flowers, uh, not the, this particular flower, but same little group of flowers for the other video today that's showing the cabins. So here I'm going to add water and I'm using even a little bit more of the color from the block to add to it. So I get some more intense color. This one is going to have more of a pink flavor to it. The other one had more of a brick red kind of color. So give the two of them a little different color tone overall. And this one will be just a bit brighter. I'm going to add some pink onto the awning actually on both awnings so that I can have some nice bright color up there as well. Again, this is giving me a nice restful area for the eye so that it doesn't get too busy with all the little flowers and things. And on this one, it has the sign that's above the window awning as well as the little awning awning, the little round one over the door. So you could put words on both of those if you wanted, which would be kind of fun. I'm not going to end up doing that. I'm going to add some detail though. I want the window underneath of that awning to go really dark. So I'm going to go in directly with a black pen to start to add color in there and then even pick up a little bit from the block. And that's going to make the flowers look like they're popping forward. Really bring them out and recess that window back in. Again, I'm going to darken some shadows. Like I said before, the window is going to, or the 
door is going to be really recessed in there. So putting in some dark color will make a difference here. And you can even put some shadows then using the dark uh, shadows cast from the awnings. A shadow on the left side of the building if you're that is, if your light is coming from the direction mine is, which is over on the right, then that whole left side of the building will be in shadow. That front side of the window box on the left might be popping out toward the front and that sort of thing. So you can get as crazy as you want with shadows and all sorts of stuff in these. And I've put a sidewalk color right underneath of the, the shop and then I put a street color below that. So it looks like we've got a road here out in front and I'm just leaving that line across them very dry brush because I want to keep it in the flavor of loose watercolor. And I put a little shadow on the ground where the building casts a shadow into where that, that awning goes in uh, around the door area. And then I'm going to get some more color to add some greens in the back, some little grass. Now I'm doing this just with a brush. You can stamp all of that grass in there as you always do with your watercolors, but I thought I'd let you know that you can also just paint. You don't have to actually do all of that kind of detail with the stamping. Uh, when you do stamp the words on these, just so you know, um, I stamped mine onto acetate first using the Misty so that I could get the placement just right because since these are not clear stamps, you can't really see exactly where it's going. And it was really helpful to use that to test it out first and make sure everything's gonna line up right on the sign in order to add that in there. So now I'm gonna add just a few last details that disappeared to give some solid shadows in a few areas. And then I will uh, put this onto a card base. Now, if you're interested in more about stamped watercolor, I do have some stamped watercolor classes over on my website. So there'll be links to those in the doobly-doo information on the blog if you want to get to the other video. And I'm also going to put a link to the other video right here on the screen. I hope this video was fun for those of you who love stamped watercolor. I'll see you again very soon.